Real Players of WoW, Taro here, and in this video I'm going to show you the best routes for mining in the Valley of the Four Winds. In this episode we're going to look at two routes for this zone. Make sure you have enough bag space, you're repaired, and buffed. You're going to need to have at least 500 in mining, although 550 is ideal, which can be less if you have a bonus for mining. If you don't have mining and would like to get it, check out my website tarowildguides.com for easy leveling of really any profession. If you haven't seen episode 1 where we head into the Jade Forest, you're going to want to check it out to find out some extra tips how you can increase your gold per hour with mining. I've gone ahead and linked it on the screen and it's going to be linked again at the end of the video with all the zones which become available once they're released. In the Valley of the Four Winds, we're going to be running each route for 30 minutes. And the routes I use are always tried and true with some minor adjustments for better optimization happening live in the video if need be. After these videos release, I always add my new routes to my custom routes, which you can get by following the link I've posted on the screen. I've also gone ahead and added a link for the routes tutorial, which is a must see for any gatherer. The path I'm showing you right now is semi-long, but it gives plenty of time for nodes to respawn and to trip up competition if you have any. I really shouldn't say if. You will have competition in VOTFW, considering it is one of the most populated zones for levelers and level 90s. There's lots of idlers mindlessly farming, waiting on an RBG, a guard group to form, or any other numerous reasons like dailies. This, like any other zone, is also going to have lots of rare mobs you can stop and kill as well. NPC scan is an add-on that can really help out with that, and it's also a great way to multitask and get some more achievements done while you're farming. Not to mention all the dark soil you can find in the heartland section that's going to give you rep with the individual tillers. I've gone ahead and linked a video of that on the screen to help you get that faster, Alright, so after 30 minutes we mined up 349 Ghost Iron Ore, which is pretty similar to the Jade Forest. Now let's switch my route to the second one and see how it does. Oh, and even though I mentioned it in Episode 1, do make sure that you have your Mist Piercing Goggles. They don't cost much, and you're going to get that back in extra notes within one gathering session. Just check the auction house or get an engineer to make them for you. Then leave them in your bags and they're going to find extra nodes for you which you can tell that they're extra by like the little clouding of mist over the node. This second route focuses on a less populated west side but still shoots you through the most popular heartland area and daily quest section. The sheer amount of node spawns easily justifies going into the thick of the competition. But don't forget to CC single mobs and always pop all your cooldowns to kill them as fast as you can if you do pull aggro. Those lost seconds really add up if you don't nuke mobs fast enough. I estimate that for every mob encounter you're losing or from as many as 3 nodes in the same time frame. Skip non-rich nodes if you do run into a level 90 that's got a lot of health. I've had competition all throughout this farming session. And here's one of my competitors. He's just a bit slower than me, and while it does look like he has the last laugh by getting a rich ghost iron vein in front of me, that one actually has some mobs, and there's a trillium one right over here. Alright, with that we finished up our second route, and it did much better than the first, giving us a nice 453 ghost iron ore and 3 trillium ore. Now we just head back to Orgrimmar and list everything up on the auction house. First though, we're going to compare prices for ore versus bars. It's a pretty common question I get, and in this case bars are a big enough difference to warrant maybe smelting them. Or is it? I'll let you know at the end of the video if it really works out. With everything smelted, we can put the bars on the auction house for 12 hours in full stacks by using the auctionator add-on which I've linked on the bottom right of the screen. After a few hours, everything sold without even needing to relist. The two routes combined netted 802 ghost iron ore and 3 trillium ore which gave us a grand total of 2700 gold for an hour's worth of farming. Now remember, we sold bars so how would we have fared with the ore? It would have been 250 gold less money. So bars were a smarter choice, right? 
wrong because it took 11 minutes to smelt them and in that same 11 minutes we could have mined up another maybe 147 ore which would equal around 440 gold. It would be worth it though if you wanted to go AFK since smelting doesn't take player interaction. So there is pros and cons to both sides. Well that's it and I'm going to see you guys and girls next video and guide when we take a look at some routes for Kuhn Lai Summit and a special item to make mining faster. Thanks for watching everyone and if you haven't yet please share this video, visit tarawildguides.com and subscribe for more wild videos. Now go mine up some profits or something. Late. <laughs>